How to organize family photos. Do you have a ton of family photos and you're not sure what to do with them? Or are you a photographer and you're trying to help your clients figure out what to do with all of these photos? Well, either way, I'm gonna give you my three biggest tips for storing and organizing your family photos so that you can continue to enjoy them for years to come. It's showtime. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd, and I am a portrait photographer in Silicon Valley, California. I have photographed so many families over the years. One of the questions I get asked all the time is, what do we do with our photos? Like when we come back, do we just throw away the old ones? Do I just end up with all of these prints? What do I even do with all of these things? And I had to come up with some pretty good answers because in the beginning, I'm like, I don't know. I thought people already had that figured out. So once I got thinking like, well, what do we do with the photos once we receive them? Uh, I got to get creative with it. And I'm going to share what I've learned with you now. Firstly, combining print and digital. Number two, buybacks and exchanges. And three, sharing stories with the photos. All right. So firstly, print and digital. A lot of times clients are like, can I just get digital images? I'll print them myself. I'm like, well, you could, but statistically, the average digital photo dies after seven days. We have the best of intentions to get the photos, to go print them and to display them, but life happens, right? We get busy at work. The kids have a project due tomorrow that they didn't say anything about three weeks ago. All these things happen and it just gets put off and put off and put off. And then we never end up printing the photos. And that's why as a full service photo studio, print first, digitals go with the prints because I don't want to do all of this work create this incredible experience, take these gorgeous photos of you and then have them never see the light of day. I think that's tragic. So we do both and there are pros and cons to both, which is why I don't just do one or just do the other. Hard drives crash, technology is outdated, right? How many CDs have we thrown away over the years because my laptop and my new iMac don't even have CD-ROM drives? Even a USB stick, the USB port has changed. Like they don't even fit anymore. I have to get an adapter so I can plug my microphone into my laptop. First world problems, right? So just going digital is not a long-term strategy because technology changes, hardware and software. So old files might not even be compatible with new viewing software anymore. And the devices we store things on aren't foolproof. Old hard drives can get corrupt. They can crash. We can lose that kind of data. It is very fragile. Same thing with prints though. We all have seen photos from the 60s through the 80s that have turned pumpkin orange and you almost can't tell what they are anymore. Now, given we have better film technology, better printing technology than we have ever had, and that's not not really an issue anymore, but things can get damaged in floods or other natural disasters, fires happen, or we could just spill our coffee on the photo album one morning looking through it and suddenly these photos are all ruined. So having a print copy and a digital copy is a great way to ensure long-term storage. All right, number two, buybacks and exchanges. This was a thing I started in my studio years ago because a lot of my clients were like, well, what do we do with all these giant wall portraits of our family? Like, they're beautiful. We don't want to throw them away. I'm like, well, let's do a buyback or exchange program. So if you get a 30 by 45, which is a ginormous print of your family, you're not going to hang up 10 different 30 by 45 prints on your walls. Like, you just don't have enough square footage in your home. So every year as we update your family portraits, you can turn in the last one to get credit toward the next one. You're like, but I still want those photos. Right? So in exchange for last year's large print, you will get small prints of your family portrait. It could be eight by twelves, could be five by sevens. So a couple of those. So you still have those images in print and you'll get credit toward the next one so that we can hang those up on the wall and constantly have new images for your family to show off. Not every photographer does this, but also it's a good thing for photographers because I am constantly updating the samples that I have in my studio. As I get these buybacks and exchanges back, if they're in perfect condition still, which usually they are because they're on the wall, they're not being handled all the time, then I can rotate these new samples throughout the year. And as I've grown as a photographer, I constantly have my new updated latest greatest favorite works up on the wall. 
So everybody wins. And number three, sharing stories with your photos. This is basically a modern take on scrapbooking. So rather than keeping a photo album of, let's say, five by seven prints where you might put glitter or, you know, magazine photos or something else with it to document that time in your life, write stories. So it's almost like a journal with the photos. So as you have these, even just five by seven prints, you can put them on one page, write about what was happening with your family at the time. What were the kids doing? Did they start T-ball? Did someone just graduate from high school? Lost a first tooth, first heartbreak, right? Any of these things that we experience as families can go in this journal. And what's cool about this, as opposed to a traditional photo album, you know, I know looking through old photos with my own family over the last several years, we see photos from, you know, the early 1900s. And I'm like, cool, but I don't know who any of these people are, where this was taken, what was even happening. And I know we used to write on the back of the images, the year and the location, but there's no context. We just have to know. And as memories fade, it's also playing a game of telephone. We tell the same stories about our families over and over again. The details change over time. This is a way to really put, well, in writing, what is going on with your family. So future generations, or even 10 years from now, when you look through these images, you can think back on those memories, the little things that you might have forgotten, right? That somebody lost a tooth or just made honor roll for the first time or something else like that. Write those notes in this book with the images and it can be an efficient way to document your family's history without needing a ton of photos. So there you go. Those are my three biggest tips for preserving and utilizing your family portraits. Combining print and digital. In case something happens to one, you've always got the other. Buybacks and exchanges. I want you to still have all of your images, but we can rotate which ones are large and up on the wall. And number three, keep a detailed photo journal that's like a journal scrapbook. So you actually have the stories of your family written down to go with the images. I've got a ton of other great videos on this channel about how to choose the right photographer for you so that you can find the perfect person to take your family portrait. And if you're looking to get into photography, the whole rest of the channel's about that. So be sure to subscribe and never miss one of my videos. And if you'd love to get in front of my camera to document your family's history, I would love to photograph you. You can find me at MikeLloydStudios.com. You are amazing. I'll see you inside.